This is Simon with HSE UAV presenting the M4E spraying drum. This is a 5 liter spraying drum designed for small areas. Let's go ahead and take it out of the box. This is our first unboxing of this. Take out the arms here. You can see we got the props pre installed. So what is this aircraft uh, marketed towards? So this is really perfect for a entry level spray platform. It's got a really great price point. Uh, again, it's only a five liter capacity, so it is best suited for smaller areas. We expect that this will work really well for aquatic spraying um, and smaller um, areas as well. We'll take out the controller here as well. See what else we've got. We've got a funnel to fill it. So when purchasing this, is this uh, what you call ready to fly? This is a turnkey solution. So everything is included, and we'll go over all the parts that are included along with the assembly process. All right, so here we have the main body of the drone. One of the really cool features about this platform is that it's a completely waterproof enclosure. So there's no worry about dust intrusion, water. Um, this can actually even be submerged safely. Um, oh, rain? Rain is no problem. Uh, the motors and the actual frame are completely sealed. So we'll move on to the motors here. So these are the motors. Little brushless motors, nice and simple. You can see there's nozzles on two of the motors here. These motors are mounted on the rear of the platform and the ones without the nozzles are mounted on the front. Let's go ahead and open up the controller. I have a question about, uh, about the nozzles. Are they replaceable if I need a different application rate? Absolutely, so these nozzles are a standard size. You can remove the housing just like that. You can remove the nozzle like so. Let me get this nozzle out. There we go. Oh. So this little green portion is actually the nozzle and this is a replaceable part. Does not look expensive either. No, no, it's a very simple <laughs> off the shelf uh, style nozzle. So we'll put that back on. And it just screws back in place. All right, well, here's the controller. Let's take it out of the case. Here's some cables and accessories for it. Looks like we have some USB cables. Um, a couple of little labels and tools to adjust the knobs on it. On this side. So this controller is really, really slick. We've been using these for a little while now in our new E6 autopilot system. And we're really, really happy with the performance of it. You can see it has a very adjustable tablet mount. You can turn it in any orientation. It fits very large tablets cool. or even phones. So wait, question, I could put like a cell phone on that or a tablet? Absolutely, so you can use cell phone or tablet with this. It's got a <clears> lot <throat> of range of motion. And the nice thing is that it folds flat for transport so you don't have to unscrew it every time when you put it back in your case. And it's really, really easy to- um... Why these? Oh yeah, so this is also designed with heavy use in mind. Being a spraying drone, we expect that the controller is gonna get a little dusty and dirty as well. So we have dust boots around the uh, gimbals. Seems simple, but necessary. Oh yeah, it's a simple little feature that's really gonna prolong the life of the controller. And again, we got a couple switches here. We have our mode switch, pump, our um, uh, AB point switch, which I will explain in a minute, and a couple other functions here as well. The power switch, we could see, we could actually check the power level of the controller, and if we hold it down, it will actually turn on. Uh, on the bottom, we have a USB port and a micro USB port for actually charging it. Let's see what else here. So this is an accessory uh, kit that comes with each of these drones. Inside the accessory kit, you have a screwdriver. We have the two antennas for the drone, so we can go ahead and mount those. Would I need tools to assemble something like this, Simon? Uh, the only tools that are required are to install the actual arms onto the aircraft from the uh, shipping case, uh, and they are included. So you have a uh, little wrench to turn the, uh, the bolts, and that's really all you need. Let's 
see, these are the, the pins and bolts to actually hold the arms in place. We have a cable used to um, update any firmware on the aircraft. You can see it's got a connector right here that matches the connector on the back of the aircraft right here. This is a waterproof connector, so you can update firmware and update the software with the USB cable. <coughs> so question, this is a agricultural drone. This is yes. not something that's been modified or? No, this is designed from the ground up and the software has been designed from the ground up for agricultural spraying. So that is what this is designed to do. Uh, again, five liter tank capacity. Uh, we get about um, uh, 10 minutes of uh, flying time with this aircraft. It uses one 16,000 6S battery. And uh, we can cover about one and a half acres per flight. So again, this is best suited for smaller areas, but there's a lot of uses where something this size can be used for. Uh, going from small uh, yards and fields, um, under uh, other obstacles and trees and small areas, um, aquatic spraying, like I was saying before, this is a great platform. Actually, let's go ahead and put the uh, motor arms on. See what it looks like fully assembled. What do you think? Cool. One thing I want to show before I put the motor arms on: these landing gear legs are easily replaceable, and they're designed to actually pop out in case of a hard landing. So they have two little clips that you squeeze to loosen. So if I were interested in something like this, is there? A, do I visit your website, or do I make a phone call, or? Absolutely. So we have two options of purchasing this. You can visit us at hsc-uav.com, but we are now offering this aircraft on amazon.com as well. And link will be in the description below. Cool. So let's go ahead and put the motors on. So we'll put these on the front here. So tell us a little bit about uh, HSC. You, we are out of... We're in Orlando, Florida. We're based out of Orlando. We've been in the uh, agricultural spraying business for... Uh, Quite a few years now. Um, we have uh, hundreds of customers all over the world. We are a, a worldwide international company. And we offer, uh, in addition to our drones, we also offer training services for our drones. So you deal with uh, government platforms as well? Yeah, so we've done a lot of work with a lot of different companies. Um, we work with um, some big names like the USDA, uh, working with our aircraft, and um, everyone's been really, really happy with these aircraft. We have a uh, uh, somewhat global um, autopilot system now that most of our agricultural drones use. It's called the E6 autopilot system. Uh, so even from the five liter model to our 20 largest model, which is a 20 liter model, it uses the E6 system. So one of the nice things about that is it will allow a user to uh, be able to operate the aircraft, whether it's a small little five liter or a 20 liter model. So I have a question. Say I, I'm a new pilot and I'm, I'm not like commercial. Do I need a special certification to operate something like this in the US? Great question. So in order to operate a uh, unmanned aircraft in the United States, you do require a part 107 certificate from the FAA. And that is a remote uh, pilot's license. <coughs> So where would I go if I needed to, uh, you know, to be legal? How would I? I don't know anything about this. Right. So if you visit our website, hsc-uav.com, you can. Uh, we have a page on there that explains the process of uh, of acquiring the Part 107 uh, license. Um, so make it kind of simple. It's a uh, it's a license that explains how to operate UAVs in a commercial setting. So the kind of airspace that you're allowed to fly in. The, um, um, you know, where you can and cannot fly, how large the aircraft can be. One of the nice things about this particular aircraft that fully loaded, it's under 55 pounds. Why is that important? It's important because above 55 pounds, you require a special exemption with the FAA to operate the aircraft. Now, the nice thing is that our larger models, like our 15 liter and 20 liter models, actually, uh, we have a blanket exemption for those to fly above 55 pounds. But this one, being under 55 pounds, makes it really, really simple uh, because it's not required. So, so what you're saying is, step. so what you're saying, Simon, just so I understand, I can buy this aircraft from Amazon or HSC.com, get my Part 107, 
and I can fly legally. Absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and put, I already got two of these arms on. So basically I slide the pins through and I'm putting the nut on the other side. And once it's assembled, you can see the arms actually fold down. So I'll put the nut in here, tighten it up with the wrench that's provided. And uh, you know, this takes about 10 minutes to put, maybe actually less than 10 minutes to put all the arms on. So once it's together, do I need to disassemble every flight? Uh, you don't need to disassemble every flight. Uh, you only need to disassemble it if you want to uh, put it back in its uh, original uh, box, uh, but it's not required. So we'll finish putting the rest of these motors on. Well, it looks like a hard plastic. It looks like it's hard to break. And right. What kind of aluminum is this? It's extremely durable. So it, this is a really interesting design, and it's a, it, it's a really well-designed platform. This shares a platform with our 10-liter model, the M6E. So it carries double the capacity of the M6E version. Um, this is the M6E here. M6E. It's so very similar in design and uh, concept. Uh, what's nice about that is it's, it's designed to be used. This is a, a commercial aircraft. And what I mean by that is, it's extremely durable. Like I said, it's waterproof. It has a, uh, you know, an excellent flight time for the size and coverage. And what is this right here? Oh, right, so that's one of the things that I love about this design. This part is actually part of the motor controller. So they're built into the arms, and these are actually heat sinks for the motor controllers. Uh, so it, it, it's really great because it's it's reducing the complexity of the uh, of the design. And here I'm plugging in the motors. You can see them. There's a diagram here that shows me how to plug in the colors. So it's very very simple. Cool. Just simply plug it in. I didn't know that. Yeah. And then we put the arm in position like that. We grab our pin. We slide the pin through, just make sure it's lined up right. That looks good. So while you're doing that, I take it this is the tank for the chemical you want to apply? Exactly. So this is where I fill up our chemical. Let me just push this all the way through here. And just put this on. And I take it this is where the battery goes? That's where the battery goes. So those are the cables for the batteries. Positive and, and negative. Uh, yeah, you got positive and negative. Very simple anti-spark uh, connectors. Get this one all the way in. It is a kind of a snug fit, so you have to push pretty hard on these to get them to go in. There well, we go. it looks really cool. So that's basically all assembled now. I'll we'll tighten this one up and uh, kind of show you around it fully, fully assembled. We'll extend the arms out and connect the nozzles. So now the arms, extremely simple. It has a built in spring clamp, so all you have to do to lock it in place is just lift it up. all the arms up. That's what it looks like fully assembled. All we need to do is connect the tubing for the uh, nozzles, install our battery, and uh, we'll be ready to, um, to fly this. So a great platform for, uh, for spraying smaller areas. Want more information? Visit www.hsc-uav.com and also available on Amazon.